All right, everyone, welcome back once again to another Beefcast production. I'm your casting host, Beef. Thank you for joining me. Game two of this Best of Five series. Game number one going to the player down here in the bottom right-hand corner, the Red Zerg, playing for Team Fnatic. He is Moon. And his opponent dropping the first game after losing his third and the economic lead, playing for Team Evil Geniuses. He is Idra. So going into this game on Ohana, a little bit similar to how the game plays out on Antigua. The maps are a little bit similar. Um, one thing that is significantly different, though, is the destructible rock separating the natural from the third. You'll see a lot of Zergs here that are more favoring the one and two base play on this map rather than the three base play, just because it is so hard to defend both of these locations with the slower army. Lings are very, very much so uh, able to defend that area. But getting roaches out there off of creep, getting hydras out there, not so much. And this is also a map that can be pretty good for mutalisks. You see uh, some mutalisk play coming out here, but mostly it's going to be sticking to infestors. So we'll see what tech choices do indeed come out from these players. But right now, the one thing to look at is that Moon's saying, I don't even want to worry about that tech for right now. He's going to be coming out of here with the seven pool, double extractor trick. Uh, what am I talking about? What kind of pool is this? This is actually, uh, 10 pool. Yeah, 10 pool. Okay, so one drone's gonna be making its way across right now, and so he's gonna be waiting until... Yeah, okay, there we go. 10 pool, gonna be dropping, uh, the, uh, Zerglings here in just a second. Sorry, I completely lost track of what was going on there. Idra gonna be going for a, uh, 15... Uh, pool for himself back home and even going to be looking to drop a hatchery here in just a moment So he could be in a pretty rough spot as a lot of these zerglings are going to be coming across the map Only six, six zerglings are being produced here for our uh, fanatic player But that might be all that it, that he needs to put a lot of damage into Idra His own zerglings aren't really going to be hitting the field here for about 15 20 seconds after his opponents but idra thankfully going to be making four zerglings as soon as that spawning pool does complete back at home for moon going to be going into that extractor wants to get his gas up very soon here so that he can get that speed timing six zerglings going to be making their way out for idra now but these six zerglings from moon are going to be able to put a lot of damage onto the uh, hatchery but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to kill it right now six zerglings versus four numbers advantage for our fanatic player but as two more join the fight here, it's going to become about the engagement, trying to micro, beautiful micro there from the Fnatic player, managing to take out two of his opponent's lings, only losing one of his owns. And uh, Moon still putting a lot more pressure here onto the Hatcher, even going to be able to take out a, a few more lings. And this micro battle is actually going completely for, in favor from Moon. Uh, Moon still just going to be hanging on with four of his Zerglings, already taking out six of his opponents here. One manages to get the snipe there with Idra's uh, Queen going to be coming in. That marks the end of the aggression for our Fnatic player, but already with that spawning pool down and researching speed, Moon's going to have another timing when speed does end up hitting here, but he's going to be choosing to drop a hatchery of his own so that he doesn't fall too far behind in terms of macro. Let's take a look at drone count. Uh, Moon has actually taken a significant worker lead. Uh, back at home because of this. Managing to drone completely. That was only six Zerglings versus ten for Idra there. Uh, so Moon, yeah, he, he's in a pretty good spot economically. He's got the timing coming up with his spawning pool. Idra hasn't even started researching yet. He's going to be about a full minute and a half to two minutes behind on speed here. And this could spell a lot of trouble for Idra. Even going to be throwing down a Baneling Nest now. Will the fifth race over here, that's his nickname from Warcraft 3, Somewhat interesting. I never watched a whole lot of Warcraft 3 myself, but when I did see it a couple times at BlizzCon, very fun. Managed to see Grubby playing it before I knew who Grubby was, and that was that was pretty cool. Never really knew too much about it, but I heard Moon's pretty good. You know, making a lot of money. A couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Not too big of a deal. Pain the Nest is going to be completing here very soon, and Idra going to go ahead and spot that there is, in fact, a hatchery down, so that might cue Idra to think, oh, maybe I can drone up a little bit, which is what he's doing. Four drones are going to be coming down here, 
And if you're going to start working on those so pesky destructible rocks as Moon's speed has finished as Idris is just starting right now. Baneling's even going to be starting to morph over here. Not sure where they are. Baneling's over here. So yeah, this is going to be some more aggression coming out here from our Fnatic player. Idris is going to need to move his queen over. And he does block the ramp right now with those queens. And even using his zerglings until the queens do get into position. But he needs to move all these drones back. The Banelings are actually in position to intercept the drones. And the drones actually take a huge hit right there as seven workers are killed and the Zerglings even going to be making their way over to the hatchery. The hatchery is going to fall as well and Idris actually in a terrible position now uh, losing his economy there. Just really falling behind his opponent. 27 to 23. Uh, he's up in workers but he doesn't have the second base to work off of right now. And behind this Moon is going to be droning knowing that he's done the damage. He's going to go into a defensive position as Idris slowlings start to make their way across the map. A couple of defensive banelings even going to start morphing back here for Idra, two already on the front lines, but Idra simply does not have the infrastructure to produce enough units to break this wall right now. He's going to be trying as much as he can, and a couple of good detonations there for Idra. Not really the best for Moon, as the Queen is going to be standing back here with a lot of energy, going to be able to transfuse the Spinecrawler if needed, but Idra trying to dart in there, but with these six Banelings going to be coming in here right now, two Banelings going to be making their way in, and uh, two for four Banelings there, absolutely beautiful hit. For our Fnatic player and blocking the ramp with these Zerglings. If the Zerglings manage to make their way into the base, they might be a little bit pesky, but they're simply not enough right now. Three Zerglings are going to be the only thing left for the time being. And even a couple of drones just saying, hey, man, that's enough for us to take. Good odds for us any day. And the Zerglings just going to be trying to waste a little bit more of Moon's attention. But Idra is in a terrible spot right now. Moon up seven drones with that second base already mining. Idra's hatchery is going to be finishing here relatively soon. And Idra, I, I don't know how he can come back from this. He, he needs to make something really big happen. He's going to have to start taking some risks, which is something that Idra is not necessarily known to do too often. As the uh, layer starts over here, he's going to be taking a second gas, and I would expect a third and fourth relatively soon here. Any of that layer tech is going to require quite a bit of gas. A couple of Zerglings are even going to be making their way up in here once again. Sees the Baneling and he wants to dart back out, but the aggression from Moon is not necessarily over. A couple of Banelings making their way up as well over here. Zerglings going to be still trying to work on the rocks. The gas number three has already been dropped, but a couple of these Banelings going to be going in there. Spinecrawler and Queen can be able to clean that up nicely, but a Spinecrawler does in fact go down, so even another little blow there for Moon, Moon or excuse me, for Idra. Moon really just pressing the advantage here starting his own lair back home just a few seconds behind Idra and managing to saturate all four of his gases as well. Fourth gas can be going up for Idra as well, but Moon spots it. Brilliant job here by our Fnatic player, being able to get into position to see those gases, knows the timings. Now he's going to know, okay, if you're up on four gas, that means that you have a lair. I don't know that you have a lair, but there's absolutely no reason that you would be on four gases if you weren't on lair tech. Burrow going to start researching here as well as an infestation pit going down. So this is the risk that Idra is going to be going for. He's going to be using his investors not in a capacity just for fungal defense or an offensive push, but he's going to be using burrowed infester tactics. Uh, third going to be going down here for Moon, knowing that he's in an advantage, wants to press that advantage even further. And Moon's choice right now is just going to be to use the uh, one evolution chamber that he did in fact drop to start plus one missile attacks and go for speed. This is the same build that Moon did in fact use last game. This, the uh, early game was a little bit more drawn out in this one, but both players going to be going into their tried and true tactics it looks like. As Roach Speed does start at home for Idra with that infestation pit and Burrow uh we'll see i mean it really it has to catch moon off guard uh to know that this is not going to be coming and really just hit home to a lot of economic damage while his opponent isn't able to take it but with this overseer coming into the base right now the overseer is going to be looking for any kind of tech knowing what he has to prepare for he's going to be looking for a spy knowing that that is viable on this map and will he see what he needs to see? The Queen's going to start targeting here and finally confirms that there is in fact a lair and there it is. He sees the infestation pit. He even might know. He didn't see that uh, Burrow had just completed there. Idra trying to look around and see what his opponent is up to does confirm that the third is down for his opponent and trying to defend his third as well. But with these roaches going to be moving out across the map right here and speed going to be finishing very quickly as well, knowing that his opponent might not have infestors out on the map just yet, although he 
he does now. Uh, Moon looking to try to hit a little bit of a timing, but not a whole lot of a timing to hit. Even going to be grouping up here pretty well. A couple of Baneling hits going to be going down as well, and Fungal's going to be going down there on all of these units going to be lowering their HP a lot, but not going to be able to kill any of them. And Idra actually doesn't have enough units, so Spine Crawlers had not completed yet. And Moon just hits an absolutely beautiful timing. Idra GG's right there on the spot. So, absolutely beautiful textbook game there from Moon once again, putting on the aggression, taking the economic advantage after dealing a lot of damage to his opponent. And then just trying to press that advantage, expand back home, start droning up a little bit more than his opponent. And then seeing that his opponent was having to take a risk to try to get back into the game, punishing him for having a very small army. Moon takes game number two, putting himself just one game away from taking the series in its entirety. Join me again for game number three here. Going to be bringing that back to you in just a moment. I've been your shoutcasting host, 